Jeremiah chapter 15 Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this people. Moses would have made intercessions and saved the children of Israel many a time. Samuel intervened with the children of Israel when they wanted a king. These are two men that stood before God. And Israel were, was kept out of trouble. Cast them out of my sight that let them go forth. It shall come pass if they say unto thee, Whither shall we go? For then shall tell thus saith the Lord, such as death for death. I mean, that's not a location of, of fairness. Such are for the sword to the sword, war. As for famine to famine. That's a location God's given them as Here's your choice. As captivity to captivity. That's the only place. Death, well, that's a grave. Sword, that's the that's a war. Famine is just no food, no water. Captivity, okay, that's going to Babylon. And there are many who are not going to even follow that one because later on, Jeremiah's going to, by God's going to say, all right, if you stay in the land, and let Babylon do what they need to do, you'll be okay. And they fight. And I will point over them four in kind, saith the Lord. The sword to slay, war. The dogs to tear, unclean animals, the Jews. And the fowls of the heaven, some fowls are unclean. And the ones that would ravage dead bodies are unclean. The beasts of the earth, again, the, the beast that would ravage a dead body, and a dead body itself would be unclean, according to the law, to devour and destroy. And I will, God speaking, cause them to be removed into the kingdoms of the earth. Because of Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, Hezekiah, good king of Judah, for that which he did in Jerusalem. Now Manasseh was the longest wicked king of Judah. Now when we look at the realm of Jeremiah, he's under the realm of Josiah, Jehoaz, Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin, and Zedekiah. That's the last king. And when God comes back, and runs back to this one king. Now what we're going to do, he says, here, for what she did in Jerusalem. Now take your Bibles back to 2 Kings 21. Second Kings 21. This is the longest reigning king, and he was wicked. But he did repent. But some of his sins are still lasting. Manasseh was 20 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hezebah. And he did, which is, he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. After the abominations of the heathen. Whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. Of the Canaanites. For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah's father had destroyed. Hezekiah had a revival in the land. Hezekiah did right. Now, this is a son of Hezekiah. Don't think just because you got a right person that his children are going to be right. So, everything that his father did right, Manasseh reversed it. He reared up altars for Baal. Recognize that altars? In Jeremiah, 
You know the altars in Baptist churches and in churches? Catholics worship the sun god. Made a grove. Catholics have groves. Again, you've got pulpits around, and around that pulpit, around that man, there's a bunch of plants. Artificial or not, it's still a grove. As did Ahab, king of Israel. That Israel never had a king that was right and did right. So Manasseh is copying a wicked king, and guess who Ahab's wife was? El honey pie Jezebel. He worshipped the hosts of heaven, stars, moon, and served him. He built altars in the house of the Lord. Remember that in Jeremiah? Remember, there are many altars in Jerusalem as there are streets of which the Lord said, Jerusalem will I put my name. He built altars for all the hosts of the heaven. He built an altar for great Diana, you know, that, that image that fell down from Jupiter. He had an altar to uh, I don't know, what would you probably Stonehenge that we don't know what it was for. Mars. You know, we got altars of Mars today down here in Florida. And we're sending a dragon and all that and, and, and all the spacecraft to Mars. Endeavor. The two courts of the house of the Lord. He made his sons to pass through fire. That's one of the sins. Definitely. That's murder. And there was no offering, there was no Old Testament law for murder, for sanctification, for justification, for atonement. Now David got the sure mercies of God. Under Manasseh, people were innocently dying. His own children. In the Zerb Times, you open up the, 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 the newspaper to check his horoscope. You know, President Ronald Reagan, the entire secret staff and all, all the people at the White House could not make maneuvers of President Ronald Reagan until Nancy Reagan had her spiritual advisors. Most of the government under Ronald Reagan was run by the spiritual advisors of Nancy Reagan. Uh, they did a very good job the day that, that Ronald Reagan was shot. I don't know how what she did, but... She was into that kind of things, and Ronald Reagan was directed in the, in the White House by the serving and used enchantments. Hocus Pocus, B5 Fofum, and dealt with familiar spirits. Oh, can you bring Grandpa so he can tell, Grandpa can tell us where he put the key. Can you bring my husband to tell me where he put the life insurance policy? Oh, we want to talk to our child one more time. Seances. And wizards. You know, Harry Potter. Wizards of Odds. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him, God, to anger. He set a graven image. You mean like the one with the four presidential heads in North North America? That's a graven image of four presidential heads. You mean the big Washington Monument in Washington, D.C.? You mean all the statues of, of war heroes and he said a graven image of the old grove that he had made in the house. Of which the Lord said to David, saw him his son the house in Jerusalem. That's the temple. In the worship house of the Lord, there is a grove, trees, plants, and there was a graven image. You know, some colored churches that don't represent the gospel, represent political atmosphere, you know, they have MLK. Even they had their own pastors. I know a church right now in, where I come from, New London County, and you can see all the stained glass windows of colored disciples and a colored Jesus. 
I don't mean brown. I can take you to Catholic churches and I can show you a grove. And sometimes Mary's there. Neither will I make the feet of Israel move any more out of the land which I gave their father. Verse 9. But they hearken not, and Manasseh seduced. There was, a, there, was a, there was a magician in the book of Acts that was seducing the people until Philip showed up. And you've got Christian magicians out there seducing in the name of Jesus, of course. To do more evil in the nation. He did worse than the nation. Alright, 2 Chronicles 33. I went to Corinthians. 2 Chronicles 33. This is what we're going to look at today. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, early. And he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. But, <laughs> sometimes buts in the Bible are not good. Did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abomination of the heathen, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. For he built again the high places which Hezekiah's father had broken down. He reared up, isn't that an expression for chastising your children? Reared? Rear up your children? He reared up altars for Baal. Now, in Kings it said Baal. Chronicles says Baal. You see the Baal? You see the I am? That's plural gods. The I am makes it plural. Not just Baal, other gods. Made groves. And worship all the hosts of heaven. Star, moon, planets, meteorites. And serve them. He built altars in the house of the Lord. Again. All eyes closed down. Anybody wants to come up to the altar? Again. And was, well, you know, you can't find prayer. You can't find the altar in the Bible. And then he'll come and say, well, you know, you can't find the word Trinity. You can't find Trinity. Uh, but I can find God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Well, you know, you can't find the rapture in the Bible. But I can find it at, 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 at the sound of the trump. The dead in Christ shall rise the first. And those that remain in court shall be caught. Be. I can find that. I can't find anywhere where Paul, Peter, James, Jesus went to a particular building and knelt down at a particular something at that building. You want them to step out so they can be counted greater for your numbers. You know, it's amazing. I see today at Walmart and I've seen at churches. i see it at Walmart. The Walmart that we go to, when you walk out of the store, the person is holding a gadget. Boink, 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 boink. When my daughter and I go there, boink, we get a double boink, boink, because there's two of us. Walmart and your Baptist churches are doing the same. We're counting the people. And don't give me a, okay, you may have dedicated churches that really want to learn, serve and do right with the Lord. But most of your churches, they want you to step forward so you can be counted on the county sheet. That they can be bragged about before their pastor friends. That's all it's about. That's where you got, you know, just say this prayer. I was in a church like that. And made groves. Again, that's that, those are trees, artificial or real, worship all the hosts of heaven and serve them. You know, like I said before, ships can use and sextant and the navigation of the stars, and there's the Big Dipper, there's there's Leo the Lion, and there's Orion and all that. And they can use that, okay. I know where I am in the Atlantic Ocean. And that cluster of stars, that constellation. Okay, if it's over there, I'm south. They can tell by the navigation. They're not worshiping and serving those. They're using them as an aid in worship 
for navigation. Now, to worship and serve the star would be, okay, then you, you offer a little wine, you offer a little incense, you get down your knee. Oh, I thank you, Leo, for telling me where we're going. Oh, thank you for the Big Dipper. And you give all honor and glory to the Big Dipper. Not God who made the Big Dipper. He also built altars in the house of the Lord. You know, and so forth. Well, we're in the house of the Lord today. And then at the end of the service of the house of the Lord, come up to the altar. You can't find that in the New Testament. And when you find an altar in the house of the Lord, listen, there was no altar in the house of the Lord, the tabernacle of Moses. There was no altar in the house of the Lord, of the tabernacle of David. And there was no altar of the house built by Solomon. There was the, the, the mercy seat in the, in the ark. And in, in the holy place, there was the candlestick, the altar of incense, which could have been in the holy place, but but the altar is the table of showbread, twelve loaves of bread. And then you went outside, there was the brazen labor that they washed. And there was the the brazen altar. No one knelt at that altar, they would get burnt hands. And they would get awfully bloody. Because that's where the animals were tied. And that's where the animals. No one prayed at that altar. The prayer of the instruments of the of the tabernacle in the temple was that incense altar. They didn't walk up and pray. To, it was a time of prayer. Uh, John the Baptist's father. No one went up and prayed at it. I mean, they're just trying to make it, they got the most holy place. And there's some Baptist, we're the temple. No, you're not. Your body's the temple. And the moment you allow a saved, an unsaved person, a person who has never trusted Jesus Christ, a moment you allow that person all our welcome, yeah, it ceases to be the temple. You have now invited wickedness. And the rapture would happen in uh, while you're in your temple. If the rapture would happen while you're in the house of God, and anybody lost, they would stay in the house of God. They would stay in the temple, the Baptist church. Really? Really? What kind of temple church, what kind of uh, house of God you got? If the rapture happened, you would have people remain stuck behind. Maybe he be your pastor. The rapture may happen, and you may have nobody exit your church that moment. Made groves and worship all the hosts of heaven, served and built altars in the house of the Lord, where the Lord said, In Jerusalem shall my name be forever. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Are you in Jerusalem? Yeah, see, that's the problem with Americans. They haven't set their eyes on New Jerusalem. They, you know, the Jerusalem of America. America is not Jerusalem. Your church is not Jerusalem. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven. Again, Jupiter, Queen, and all that. In the two courts of the house of the Lord. Watch out for churches that have a sundial, and on that sundial they have a happy moon and a happy sun, little stars. My moon is my moon and sun don't have a star. I mean, a happy face. He caused his children to pass through the valley and pass through the fire in the valley. And the sun to hit him. That is Molech. That's one. That's why God said, "Hey, there's still sin in Jerusalem." You know what was supposed to happen to Manasseh for murder? You know what the law prescribed? The hand that shed the blood, his blood shall be shed. Manasseh died really of a ripe old age. The blood of his children is still in the land. It's still in the ground. He observed times and used enchantments and used witchcraft. 
Well, that was witchcraft. Is because you got the wizards down there next verse words. Magic. And it salts me to have Christian magicians. I know three of them. One of them was on a missionary field. And the great thing of his BBS, you can ride around and half cut away oil drums on his little choo choo. And dwelt with a familiar spirit. And wizards. Wizards. Different from witchcraft. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger with what? Witchcraft, village, village, wizards, enchantments, serving times, murder. He set a carved image, the idol which he had made in the house of the Lord, of God, and which God said, David, Verse 9, chapter 33, verse 9. So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem err to do worse than the heathen, whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spank unto Manasseh, as Jeremiah is speaking, to his people, but they would not hearken, like they are in, in Jeremiah, like America is, like the Christians are, like the churches are. Wherefore the Lord brought upon the cap brought upon them, Manasseh, the captains of the host of the king of Assyria. So what we're reading in Jeremiah is not new. The, the, the Assyrians have come and taken Israel captive. The Assyrians have come during Manasseh in Judah. Which took Manasseh more among the thorns. They beat his butt. They chastised him. And brought him with fetters, handcuffs. And carried him to Babylon. The Assyrians brought him to Babylon. This is not new. You know what God just did? God put, hey, remember? Remember? Because it's going to happen to you if you don't get right. And when he was afflicted, when he was in his affliction, like Samson, he besought the Lord his God. <laughs> his God. No, look, look at the repentance. And he humbled himself greatly before the God of his father. Look at the repentance. And he prayed unto him. And he was entreated of him. He heard his supplication and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord was his God. You know, you know what God's reminding to Jeremiah? All right. You and Judah and the king was in vile wickedness. I take you away to Babylon. The king got right, and I brought you back. Your state where you are right now is where Manasseh was. Now, after this, he built a wall without the city of David on the west side again. That wall is coming down to Babylon. In the valley, even they entered the fish gate. And Capes Ovel, you know, that fish gate we'll read about in Nehemiah. And raised it at very great height and put captains of war in all the fenced cities of Judah. They ain't going to stop the Babylonians from coming. Now watch this. Now here's true repentance. He took away the strange gods. Not only did he say, God, I'm sorry, he got right by correcting the matter. And the idol out of the house of the Lord. And all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of the Lord. And in Jerusalem, he cast them out of the city. He got rid of what angered God. That's a revival. You're not going to get that in America. Because the houses, the families of Christians, the families of God today, they won't get rid of the junk. They won't, they won't clean up their house. They won't clean up their family. They'll still skip Sunday Sunday service so they can go to Ratland. They'll save their money not for missionaries, but so they can go to roller coaster. They won't give out gospel tracts, but they'll go on that cruise.
He repaired the altar of the Lord. Was it uh, disrepair for what he did or just by age? He sacrificed there on peace offerings. That would have been the brazen altar. Thank offerings. So he truly got right with God. And commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. God is reminding, hey, there was extreme hatred by God. There was extreme sin. I brought the, the Syrians in. I took your king captive. You went to Babylon. He repented. He got right. And he fixed what he could up. Because nevertheless, the people did sacrifice still in the high places. Yet unto the Lord their God only. Yeah, that's what's wrong with the churches today. Yeah, we, we, we do the Lord's service in the worldly kind of sense. And then in the time of Jeremiah, one thing about my Bible, I don't want my new Bible, I don't have dates. Now the church is moving toward what service was truly for God. We, we, got, a little, we got a little world in it. Now we got a lot of world in it. A little leaven leavens the whole lump and the church is a church in the world. That Satan's inside in the front pew, amen in the preacher, and Jesus Christ is standing outside the door knocking. Because we allowed a little leaven. Manasseh allowed, oh, okay, it's the high play. Oh, they're doing it for God. You can't do that. You know, we, we're going to do Easter, but we're going to call it Resurrection Sunday. And yet, it's not three days and three nights from the Passover day. It's wrong. You're doing the same thing they're doing with Good Friday. They're trying, it just, it's a mess. Now, the rest of the act of Manasseh and his prayer unto his God. The words of the seers. That spank on you know what the seers are? The prophets of God. You know what Judah's not doing with the seer, what we're studying about Jeremiah? They are not listening. You know what Manasseh did for a while? He did not listen. Now Manasseh got right with God. In the name of the Lord God of Israel, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel. His prayer also how God entreated of him and all his sin and his trespass and the places where the high places and set up the groves and the graven is before he humbled. Behold, they are written among the sayings of the seers, the prophets. And then Amen. And he does just like man last did, wrong. Now, is Manasseh in heaven? I, I don't know. Because he murdered. But it says God was entreated of him. All his sin. Now, for instance, let's say Manasseh's in heaven. Or will be in heaven. Alright, and the great white throne comes. Now, Manasseh will be at the great white throne. Now, whether his name is in the book of life or not, I don't know. But let's say it is. I don't know, but let's say if it is. And go back to Jeremiah. Fifteen. All right, let's take... Let's have... Oh, I'm trying to think. Uh, he's long dead. So let's say that there's a man named Jesse in Jeremiah. He's walking around Jerusalem right now. Not David, but a man named Jesse. And let's say he is living all the ways Jeremiah is preaching. And Jesse is not listening to Jeremiah. Jesse is not listening to God. Again, this is not David's father. The name I pulled out of the Bible. Jesse dies in his sins. Let's say, let's say he came by war, he came by famine, 
Whatever. Jesse died by the judgment of God. And he ends up at the great white throne judgment. And he dares to say, God, you're unfair. You're a miserable blah, blah, blah. You know what God's going to do? Not only is God going to call Jeremiah back up, I don't know how God's going to work that. I mean, if that's, you realize how many times Jeremiah's going to get up, sit down, get up, sit down, get up, and we are as we're witnesses? But, okay, calls up Jeremiah. And Jeremiah gives a testimony of, against Jesse. Who else is God going to call up? Manasseh. Manasseh, you want to step up to the plate? Say, I don't know if you saved or not. All right, Manasseh. You want to explain to me, Jesse? You, you want to give us a, a condense of your life? Well, yeah, I did miserable. I did rotten. I did terrible. Sound familiar, Jesse? I, I did this and I had idols and images. Sound familiar, Jesse? We worshiped the Queen of Heaven and, and you know, we, we I even burned my children. Sound familiar, Jesse? And God sent along the Assyrians and, and they, they whipped my butt. They put me in handcuffs and they carried me to Babylon. Almost sound right, Jesse? I mean, I killed you before you went to Babylon. And you know what? I got right. I repented. You listening, Jesse? I don't remember that about you. When I said, how'd you hear about all this? Well, God, you sent us seers, prophets. Uh, Jesse, sound familiar? Shall I call Jeremiah back up here again? And Jesse will go to hell at the testimony of Manasseh. And at the testimony of Jeremiah. Now, I can say, I, I tell people all the time, I preach here at the Farmer's Market in Daytona B. I don't give you no excuse anymore. Somebody named John. Hold out of that. Walks up to God, the great white throne judge. Oh God, you're blah blah. You know you're you killed people and, and you know you're all blah. You're just an unfair God. I never knew. I never knew about you, Jesus. Now, I don't know how this is going to happen, but from my understanding, I could be wrong. Style, you want to get up? Yes, sir. You want to tell him? Well, you know, Father. As much as the Saturdays I could, I, I was there. Okay. Were you there at the farmer's market? He said, yeah, I, I, I had a booth. I, I, okay. So, you know him? Yeah, I remember that idiot. Loud mouth. I hate him. Okay. So what did you tell them? Tell them that Jesus saved. Tell them about hell. Tell them about heaven. Tell them the gospel of Jesus Christ suffered and died according to scripture. Buried, rose, rose from dead. So I'm believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. With the heart man believes on the righteous. John 3, 16. Isaiah 1, 18. Uh, oh, okay, wait a minute. You remember that? Well, I wasn't very listening. But you recognize what he said to you? Well, yeah, something like that. He was a loud mouth. I couldn't stand him. I ain't talking about that. Do you recognize his words? Yeah. What do you guys say for yourself? You can't say, I don't know anymore. Jesse can't say anymore, I don't know. Jeremiah and King Manasseh is going to be called up to the plate. I'm going to be called up to the plate. That man happened to receive a gospel track from my daughter. All right, chick, 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 chick. Have you ever been in Daytona Beach, Florida, in the farmer's market? No, sir. Yes, you have. No, sir. Yeah, your your gospel track, uh, sir. I don't know your name. You don't have a name. Did you ever receive one of these cartoon books? Yeah, I tore it up. Who has the problem here? The man that preached me that you're standing in front of right now. The man that preached about you hated him. You didn't you didn't like him. You didn't want to hear what he said. And that gospel track that you got, you tore up. You didn't want to have anything to do with it. And, and Mr. Chick and, and Miss Hayward and Mr. Hayward, they are right. And they are going to New Jerusalem. And you're going to hell. Depart from me, you work of iniquity. I don't know you. That's 
That's what it's all about. That's why God raised Manasseh up. Manasseh is a testimony of a man that got right. <laughs> Old Testament, I don't know if he got right enough to go to heaven. That's what's bad about the Old Testament. He murdered his children. Now God said he was entreated, but did God atone? But saved or lost, Manasseh will be called to testify against any man, whether their name's Jesse or not, whatever their names are. And Jeremiah will be called. To, and I don't know how God's going to do it. And God's going to call me to testify. And God's going to call my daughter to testify. And God's going to call evangelistic Christians that went into the world and preached the gospel. Now let me give you another instance. Fred is at the Great White Throne Judgment. Fred says, Jesus, I don't know who you are. I never heard about you a day in my life. I'll give you one more thing, Jesus. I think I think they're going to be able to say whatever they want to say at the Judgment Seat. Fred. I mean, Great White Throne Judgment and the Judgment Seat. But Great White, I'll tell you one thing more, God, Jesus. What's that? You see that you got Christian over there? You know, on the right side? Who? A Christian right there. I knew him, a, a Charlie, my, my co-worker. He's over there, right? Yes. Bring him forth. Charlie, step up. That man was a Christian? How long was that guy a Christian, God? Charlie, I've been a Christian for 30, 40 years. Oh, uh, God, you want to ask him how long he knew me? I've known the guy for 20 years. How long, ask him how many times he told me about you. Charlie, how many times you tell him about Jesus? None. I wanted to be a good friend to him. I wanted my light to shine. I lost track of the names now. Charlie. Fred. The great right, right, judgment. All right, Charlie, step aside. And it's Fred and God. If, uh, Fred? Yes? Thank God I didn't know. All right. Call up Larry. What's wrong, Charlie? What's wrong, Fred? I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk. No. Don't, I don't want to talk about why? What's wrong with Larry? He's, he's one of those fanatics. But he told you about me. Yeah. You know that Larry stood at the judgment seat of Christ. And Larry got rewards for doing what he was supposed to. Charlie stood at the judgment seat of Christ. And he didn't get nothing. Now... Larry and Charlie are standing there at the Great White Throne Judgment. I mean, they're not going to hell. They're standing there at judgment. No, you not know we, we will judge angels. Fred's going to be cast off into hell. Charlie didn't say nothing at all. Larry did. Let me tell you something. The Great White Throne Judgment is at Revelation 20. Our tears are not wiped away to Revelation 22. As evangelistic I am, there will be people at the Great White Throne Judgment. And sorry to say to be people at the Great White Throne Judgment I met at Daytona State College today and I didn't even give them a gospel track. I'm not perfect. We're all going to have much eternal failures. As we will see loved ones and people we've met and people that came into our life at the Great White Throne Judgment. And we said something or we didn't say anything enough at all or we didn't say enough. 
Manasseh's being called up because he witnessed what's going on. He will be a testimony to all the people in Jeremiah's time. Hey, listen. I didn't listen to the prophets either. And God warned you about me. 